Hello, Delaware Den. You do? You have? Okay, thank you. We got one! Hey, uh, anybody call about a joke? Thank you guys so much for coming out, New York City! Yes! Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm so excited, I'm nervous. I, not for the special, I just took an AIDS test. And uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> Yo, this is great, I'm so happy you guys are here. This is amazing. Look at that little mustache, look at you! Look at you, I wanna put it together like Velcro. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, this is great. How long you had that little mustache? Like two weeks. Two weeks, always a little baby. <laughs> you gotta water him and give him love. Oh, that's so nice. Do people comment on it? Not yet. No, not yet? Well, I'm glad I could break your cherry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right, he's a little virgin. That's right. People comment on mine all the time. And it's never anyone I ever want to talk to. <laughs> it's never like a hot gal who's like, hey, uh, sorry to bother you. Can I make out with you? I want to see if it tickles, <laughs> you know? It's never that. No, it's always a guy exactly like me. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, that's a cool mustache. How long you had it? <laughs> I'm autistic. And <laughs> I'm like, really? It takes one to know one, brother. No eye contact on three, you know? I, uh, I was touring Europe, I was in Prague, and all these people kept coming up to me, like all these guys, and I'm like, hey, just so you know, the age of consent is 14. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, shut the fuck up! What are you talking about, dude? It's a mustache, not a lifestyle, all right? <laughs> the fuck are we doing, you know? Oh man, what can I tell you guys? I'm excited, I'm moving to Prague in the spring. And um, that's fun, that's fun, that's fun. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're not smiling. Uh, no, I'm kidding, I'm moving there in the winter. And uh, no, if I give you guys shit about anything tonight, just know everything is said in love and laughter, okay? I love silly little ha-has. I love silly little ha I love being a stinker, I love having fun, and I have no room to make fun of anyone because I look like I listen to porn on vinyl, okay? So I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I look like I'm just cranking an old phonograph or just cranking one out, you know? <laughs> Eye contact. Uh, yeah. Two weeks for the mustache, is this your girlfriend? No, that's your girlfriend. You got a mustache too. Whoa, you look like a guitar tech for Creed. That's amazing. That's amazing. Do you like his mustache? Love you love it. Did your dad have a mustache? Yeah, yeah I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew. It. I knew it. Dude, I'm telling the mustache. Well, girls love the mustache because I look like every girl stepdad named Terry. Okay. <laughs> It's a, dude, girls like the mustache because they have daddy issues, and I have the mustache because I have mommy issues. And my mom had a mustache, and uh, why is 
is it? Hey, okay. Why is it everything nowadays is just daddy, 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 daddy. Fuck me, daddy. Suck me, daddy. Who's your daddy? I'm your daddy, 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 daddy. Why is that okay? But then when I'm with a gal and I'm like, let me suck your nipple, mother. I'm the fucking... Oh, I'm the creep. Oh, oh, I thought it was a quality. What the fuck, lady? That's good. Yeah, girls like it. My, my ex like I was doing really good. I was doing so good. I'm still doing good, but I had a bad day. I found out my, my best friend called me and told me that um, my uh, ex-girlfriend lives in this building, and uh, he called me. He was like, dude, she looks so much better now than she did before. I talked to her. She's doing great. And I'm on the phone. I'm, like, completely covered in cat hair. <laughs> I'm just biting into a ball of mozzarella like an apple. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, I'm doing good too, you know? Tell her I'm doing good, and by the way, my penis works again, by the way. Everything got okay with my penis, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, we, we went through a, a, a breakup. Who's, who here's gone through a breakup? Anyone, anyone? Yeah, a couple, when'd you go through a breakup? Six months ago, whoa, get over it. Uh, <laughs> We're living in the past, dipshit. No, it's tough, right? They haunt you. They haunt you, right? They linger. They haunt you. Yeah, I was doing great. And then, you know, just I've, I'm of the mind of just because you go through something with someone, if it doesn't end well, and this didn't, uh, that doesn't mean that they can't help influence and help you learn and grow, you know? I think everything is in life is all about learning and growing. And even if the experience was negative, you could still grow from it, you know? And I, I, I really tried. And the, everything reminds me of her, though, especially the war, the war, the war, the war. I know, the war, yeah, because she's Muslim and I'm Jewish. I know, I know, I know. I thought we were going to be the two-state solution. I thought we were going to show that love wins. Yes, that's what I thought, guys. Who Are you Muslim? Indian. Now, cut it in post. And... No, I, 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 well, here's, okay, she is Muslim, and I said I'm Jewish because I, I just found out I'm Jew. I took a 23 and me. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing the stances you'll take when you get test results back, okay? Yeah, I know. Dude, I did 23 and me. Yeah, I know, and they sent me a mirror, and, um, I know, I know. I didn't know. I didn't know. When you do 23 Me, did you know that they send you a vial? You're supposed to spin it? I didn't know. I came in it. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Nobody told me. I didn't know. Opa. You know? <laughs> Muscle UPS, you know? No, but man, all this shit popped off, and, and, and I had done so good about not thinking about her, and then all this shit happened, and I started to be like, oh, man, and I was thinking about her, wondering about her, worrying about her family, you know, because she's family over there, you know? And uh, it really kind of affected me, and it changed my worldview. It changed how I thought about things, and I was like, oh, my God, man, all this shit that's going on over there in the Middle East right now is so fucking terrible, and I just wish the IDF would stop bombing Palestine. Yeah, yeah and focus on one house in Brooklyn. I feel like that, I feel like that would be the best. That's a solution that everyone can get behind. Yeah, I know it didn't work out well. I called her my little jihadi with the body because she <laughs> blew my life up. <laughs> yeah, it was a no good. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, uh, she was a baddie. She was a baddie. She was a baddie. I ended up getting pretty gals, and people are surprised because I look like a gremlin man. <laughs> you know? I know. Doesn't it look like I should follow girls around and be like, come with me? I'll give your pussy legs three. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wugga, 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 wugga. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I think I, I get a lot of gals because I eat pussy so good, I think it'll undead my father. <laughs> you know? 
oh yeah, come on over, take your pants off, pull out a Ouija board, let's see what happens. <laughs> But I, I, here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm, I'm single and I don't think I wanna be in a relationship for a while because I've realized that none of them ever work and what's the common denominator? Your old pal, Uncle Ian. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, here's the thing. I'm a lot, I'm a lot, I'm a lot. I know, I'm a lot, I'm a lot. I'm not for everyone, I'm a lot, I'm a lot. This is me all the time, okay? This is me, yeah, this is me medicated. Ha 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 ha. Oh, yeah, can you imagine no medication? My brain's full of spiders. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lot. You know, with gals, I'm real good at getting you. <laughs> ah, I got you. <laughs> but boy, oh boy, am I bad at holding on to you. <laughs> it's no good, you know? I'm intense, I know. I'm aware of it, I know. I'm an intense friend, okay? Yeah, that's right. If you're my friend, I'll be the best fucking friend you ever had. You need help moving, I'll help you. You need a ride to the airport, I'll do it. I don't have a car, but I'll ride in the Uber with you, yeah, yeah. Am I a good friend or just can I not be alone? I don't know, I don't know, yeah. I'm not staying alone in my apartment. That's where the nightmares live, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm intense, I pop off. Sometimes I let my anger get the best of me and I pop off and I try not to. I try to be kind and loving, you know, and, and I try to, you know, I try to treat everybody like they're having a bad day, you know? Yeah, and if I can give you a smile and you feel good, you might smile and then give one to her and she might feel good. And then you might give one to him and so on and so forth, you know? If you wanna make change in this world, we should be but a pebble in the lake of life, you know? Drop that pebble in the lake and let the ripple effects change the shore. Cause if you start trying to get people to change while you're in the middle of a lake yelling at people on the shore, you're just gonna look and sound like an asshole, you know? Yeah, that's right, you don't wanna be a fucking dickhead. Yeah, you already look like that. And I'm kidding, I'm kidding, let me blow you. And yeah. I'll go one further, treat everyone like they have a head injury. Yeah, you'd never be mean to a guy wearing a helmet, you know? Why would you be mean to him? That guy fell off a ladder, he can't make a left turn, all right? I try, that's how I try to live. But I'll tell you, you motherfuckers make it really hard, okay? Oh yeah, yeah, I try. Look, if I hold the door for you, okay, and you don't even acknowledge that I exist, well, I'm gonna follow you home and kill your family. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, your bloodline ends with me, okay? I'm intense with everything. I'm intense with my cat. I'm an intense cat owner. I'm an intense pet owner. Yeah, my cat, my cat, Samson, this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Oh my God, I love you so much. Oh, oh my God. If you have a cat or a dog and you don't corner it, grab it and scare it, why else would you own a pet, okay? Yeah, why else? I have been late to places because I am too busy grabbing his face, smashing it into mine and going, I love you, you love me. That's what makes a family. I need you. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God, I love him so much. And you know what, he has no choice to run away. I'm his God, I feed him, he needs me, you know? Yeah, what's he gonna do? Oh my God, I bend him like a long boy. Oh, you ever do that? You ever do that? Who's got cats here, cats? What about dogs, dogs? Wow, I like cats, I like dogs. I'm the bisexual of the animal kingdom. Yeah, I'll fuck them all. And uh, yeah. Oh my God, this poor little guy. I just want to know what he's thinking. That's all I want. I ask him all the time, he doesn't tell me. And you know what? Elon Musk, that stupid South African fuck, he wants to put a chip in our brain so that we don't have to tip tap type on the phone and we can just send texts without even typing. Fuck you, put a chip in my brain so I can know what my cat's thinking. I mean, what are we doing with our lives? Oh God, yeah, yeah. Imagine coming to my apartment and we're gonna hook up and you just see me grab my cat and be like, do you like a long boy? <laughs> huh? Oh, look, he's Chinese. Wee, 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 wee. Ay, 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 ay. Look at his little teeth, he's a vampire, ay, 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 you know? Oh my God, I bend him to make it look like he's sucking his own dick. You ever do that? 
You ever do that? You ever do that? Oh, yeah. Come on, Samson, suck your wiener now. Oh, look, he likes, he likes blowing himself for Papa, you know. <laughs> and he's like my son. So if I'm doing that to my son, what am I gonna do to that real alive boy? <laughs> you know, like, come on, Spencer, your turn and suck your ding dong for dad, da. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, that's a joke, Jesus Christ. I would never name my kid Spencer, okay? <laughs> what am I, an asshole? God damn, I'm sweating like I've seen in a playground. <laughs> Why'd you make me say that? What the fuck? This is my special night. <laughs> I'm intense. I'm, I'm intense with the, with the gals I date. I, I, look, I, if I love you, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. And I, I, I scare people away. I know. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody on Cross Your Arms. <laughs> I'm not for everybody. Okay? I get it. Here's a scenario. Think about this, okay? Think about this. This is why I don't think anything's ever gonna work out. Think about this, okay? You and I, we get married, okay? Congrats. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We get married, okay? We're living together. It's Friday night, okay? 2 a.m. You're at home, all right? You've had a long week, okay? Yeah, you work really hard. I'm out doing my job, doing the ha-has to give you and me a home and our son food, okay? Yeah, so you're on your period, too. That sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I know it's a heavy flow week, too. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, you got the pad on you, you know? You're heating it up, and you got PMDD. That's bad. Premenstrual dysphoria disorder, yeah, it affects 10% of women, and uh, the week before you get your period, it feels like your spine is gonna burst through your pelvis, you get dissociated, if you think everyone hates you, they do, and <laughs> you're crying, you're bloated, you're upset, you're finally feeling okay, you're on the couch, and you've got Vanderpump rules on, you're in your happy place, 2 a.m., I come home. <laughs> I come home. I live in New York City. I've been riding a bicycle around all night long. Oh yeah, that's right. I've been doing stand up all night. My endorphins are exploding in my head. I'm listening to music on the bike. That's right, yeah. Put in your baseball mitts, ladies. I'm a catch, okay? I got a huge fucking ghetto blaster, all right? I'm bebopping around town. Let me tell you, the public loves it, okay? The public loves it. I'm jazzed up. I'm listening to bands called Trapped Under Ice, Suburban Scum, Angel Dust, Skankin' Pickle, Mustard Plug. Needless to say, I'm fucking jazzed. Happy place. Me. I kick the door in, 2 a.m. I just start singing to you like you're my cat, okay? I don't even take the helmet off, all right? I can't help it. I just run up, I go, and there she is. That's my girl, prettiest girl in the whole wide world. Kiss her on the head, kiss her on the lips, kiss her on her boobies, that's for me. Yeah. Yeah. Divorce. <laughs> Whatever. All I need in this life of sin is my cat Samson, my cat Samson. That's right, every pussy in here just dried the fuck up. Uh, but all the dicks are hard. Uh, yeah, man. But I did find a gal, really, really hot. I didn't want to blow it, I'll tell you about it. She was the hottest gal I've ever been with in my entire life, and we, we hooked up one night and we were in a New York City cab, and it was, uh, it was amazing. It felt like a movie. My life a movie. Ah. Ah. We were hooking up in a New York City cab, right? Me and the hottest girl I've ever been with were going over the Williamsburg Bridge. Right when we got to the top of the bridge, me and this girl started sucking each other's dicks. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, my God. Hottest woman ever. Nice piece. And... I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I dropped my cell phone. Mom, 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 you know? I'm like, hey, honey, baby, I think you dropped your phone, girl. Yeah, 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 you know? Oh, yeah. I date trans women because I'm from the future, okay? Yeah. 
Yeah, I like my women like I like my undershirts, tucked. And, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I date trans women. I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, people finally, you know, remember the summer 2020 and people realized that trans people existed? Remember that? I was like, what? I'm like, fucking finally, y'all are catching up to old Uncle Ian. Yeah, that's right. And everybody was like, support trans women, black trans sex workers, support them. And I'm like, yeah, finally, everybody's putting their money where my mouth has been, all right? Let's go, you know? But dating trans women, it's 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 interesting because you know it's it's helped me evolve. It's helped me learn. I I never want to you know um, say the wrong thing. I never want to upset anyone. I like little jokes, but I never want to intentionally hurt anyone. You know, and being with trans women has helped me kind of understand there's a different way to look at things. You know, and I, I I'm grateful for that. It's helped me evolve. It's helped me grow. And you know, I was with this gal, and she was using different terms for things that I never really heard of or thought of before. But I rolled with it. You know, I don't want to hurt the partner I'm with, you know? So we're back in my apartment and we're making love, you know, from behind, doggy love. And <laughs> and we're doing love, love. And, and she goes, uh, mm, yeah, fuck my pussy. And I was like, <laughs> huh. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. She calls her ass a pussy. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, okay. I'm fucking your pussy. You know? <laughs> and then she was like, mm, yeah, suck my girl dick. And I was like, mm, that's a bit of an oxymoron, but <laughs> who am I? <laughs> you know? And then she said one that came really out of left field. She goes, yeah, yeah, lick my clit. And I was like, well, now I'm fucking confused, lady. <laughs> the fuck are we doing here, you know? And then I was like, oh my God, trans women are women because I can't find the clit on them either. <laughs> Just kidding, I can. I can, I know where it is. It's here. <laughs> Just kidding, it's here. But let's be honest, man, it's 2023, okay? I'm here to tell you, hooking up with a trans person doesn't make you gay, okay? Yeah, get that through your skull. It's 2023. Hooking up with a trans person doesn't make you fucking gay, okay? But it also doesn't make you like the straightest man alive. <laughs> And that's okay, that's okay. This, yes! The straightest man alive, that guy sucks, okay? That guy is gay, okay? Yeah, that guy, this is how the straightest man alive pees. I don't even touch my own penis, man, that's right. Oh, no way, I don't even wipe my own ass, that's a man's ass. Oh no, I give my son hugs with push-ups. <laughs> Yeah, dude, who cares, man? I, and look, I, I talk about this because, you know, it, it's like, I, I guess you could say at the end of the day, I am bisexual, okay? Uh, I, I, I'm with men, I'm with women, I'm with trans women, but I hate these terms because I think they do more to alienate us and bring us together, you know? I don't think it's a good idea for us to get in these, you know, subset of categories and everything. I think at the end of the day, for me, man, you, you can call me whatever you want, but I do what I want, when I want, with who I want, and I don't give a fuck what you think you'll have to say about it. That's the truth, that's the truth. It's the truth, yeah. I do what I want with who I want and I don't care what you have to say about it, mom! And I, I, at the end of the day, I feel like it's really like nobody's business, but I do talk about it because I, I do get, you know, like feedback from, from guys. And a lot of guys message me and they're like, hey man, I just gotta let you know, you talking about this publicly made me feel like it's okay to be kind of like the little freak on a leash that I am, you know? And I'm like, boom, da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> That was a deep cut for anyone that's ever worked at a Hot Topic. <laughs>
But they're like, yeah, man, you helped me kind of realize this part of me. And I'm like, oh, dude, that's amazing. You know, I'm like, as a byproduct of living my life truthfully and authentically, I can help someone else. It's fucking amazing. But then they'll treat me like a priest. <laughs> and they'll, like, approach me after a show <laughs> and be like, hey, man, uh, can I talk to you for a second? Um, when I was in high school, I sucked my friend's dick. If you tell him, I'll fucking kill you, okay? I'll fucking kill you. And I'm like, oh, I absolve you of your sins. <laughs> But it doesn't matter, man. Who cares? Who fucking cares? At the end of the day, nothing matters. We're going to run out of water by 2040, okay? <laughs> anyone, anyone you've ever loved is going to wither away and die in front of your eyes. And anything you've ever liked will be bought and sold back to you at a price you can't afford. So who gives a shit? Live your best life. Get a family. Don't. Find God. Don't. Get a fucking... Uh, eat pussy. Give head to your dead. Who gives a shit, okay? Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. Mind your own fucking business. Go out and get shitty tattoos. Why not? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're way ahead of me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I do. If God didn't want me to get all these tattoos, why'd he give me all this skin? Yeah, that's right. Go out and get the tattoo you've always wanted to get. Who cares? People always say the tattoos have to have meaning. People say tattoos have to have meaning. That's to mean something. The tattoo is to mean something. And that's your bag. Good for you. Good for you. Do what you want. But that's not for me, man. I don't think the tattoo itself has to have meaning. But I think the tattoo can mean something in a, in, in a story, in the chapter of the book of your life. You know, all my tattoos, none of these mean anything, but they tell little stories, you know, like this, this right here. This is Wiley Coyote <laughs> smoking a cigarette dressed as a vampire. <laughs> Why the fuck not, dude? Who gives a shit? That's right. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything, but it tells a story about a time in my life when I wasn't on my medication. <laughs> uh, I made a forever oopsies. <laughs> People tell me, they're like, dude, your tattoos are just a substitute for a personality. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like my version of being non-binary, you know? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm joke, please, please. This is nothing like non-binary. These are permanent. Um, so. <laughs> Just a silly little ha-ha. <laughs> Just silly ha-has. Silly little no-nos. My favorite silly little ha-has are uh, street jokes. Do you guys know what those are? Street jokes? Yeah, yeah, street jokes. Street jokes are fun, simple, quick little jokes. Uh, if if they're, they're usually, like, no one knows who, who wrote them. People just know them. They're usually, like, sexist, racist, homophobic, <laughs> offensive, really funny. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a way people communicate with each other if you've ever worked with people that don't speak English. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. If you've ever worked in a kitchen or, or a restaurant, this is how you get along with people. And if you've never worked in a kitchen or a restaurant, you can go straight up fuck yourself, okay? I do not trust you. I do not trust you. I do not trust you. I love street jokes. Here's an example. Here's an example, okay? Here's an example. <laughs> Why did the Mexican murder his wife? Tequila. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's a fun little ha ha. That's a silly little ha ha. My favorite thing to do, because I know so many street jokes, is uh, in, in New York City, homeless people tell you street jokes, and then when you laugh, they ask for money. So my favorite thing to do is to finish their street jokes for them. It blows their minds, yeah. Yeah, because that's like their currency. They tell you a joke, and when you laugh, they ask for money, and if you don't laugh, they go stab, 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 stab. <laughs> And then you go, oh, ha, 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 you're killing me, ha, 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 my size, ha, ha. So I was in the West Village one night, 2 a.m., with a bunch of friends. This guy comes up and he goes, hey, 
you guys want to hear a joke? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, okay. So uh, here's a joke. And he goes, what's the difference between The Lion King and O.J. Simpson? And I said, one's an African lion and the other's a lion African. (laughs) That's a good joke, yeah, yeah, that's a good joke. This guy's brain exploded, okay? He acted like a black dude that saw a magic trick, okay? He was like, what the fuck is that? How the fuck you know this shit? What the fuck, hey yo, what the fuck? I became king of the homeless, okay? Yeah, he gave me money, it was amazing. It was amazing, it was amazing, yeah. <laughs> My favorite street joke of all time, I'll tell you how I heard it. I, uh, I went skydiving, okay? I went skydiving in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The exact response, yeah. Yeah, it's a town that has more ears of corn than people with teeth, okay? Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's bad. And so, I went skydiving, and when you go skydiving, anyone here ever go skydiving, anyone? Yeah, a couple. I say do it, I say do it. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had because it took the thing we're all afraid of the most, which is death, and it makes you face it, get through it, and realize all of our fears aren't exactly, uh, they, they don't rule us, you know? Yeah, if, if you're scared of something, I say do it. Get to the other side, and you'll realize that uh, it was all kind of in our head the whole time. So I was so scared, jumping out on a plane, I did it, I survived, it was amazing. But while we're in the air, I get told a street joke because the man that I was attached to, and that's what happens when you tandem skydive, you're you're attached to another human. And in Allentown, Pennsylvania, they don't have a tooth. And and so I'm attached to him, and uh, he goes, hey, before we jump out of a plane, we like to tell a joke. That way, if you die, at least you die laughing. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? How many people had to die before you were like, we gotta put a smile on their face, (laughs) you know? (laughs) What are you talking about? Why are you bringing up death before we jump out of a plane? So I'm in front of him, I'm attached to him, and this is the joke he told that he whispered in my ear and then yanked me out of a plane, okay? (laughs) Don't kill the messenger, all right. Hey, how do you get a fag to fuck a woman? You shove shit in her pussy. Let's go! (laughs) And then we jumped out of a fucking plane! I'm in the middle of the air like... (laughs) I've been with men and women and it had nothing to do with the shit, man. (laughs) And it's like, yo, if I die, the last image I have in my head is a woman laying in a bed being like, are you gonna fuck me or what? And the gay guy's like, I would, but there's not enough shit. Like, what the fuck? Why would you tell me that? That guy is the straightest man alive. That guy is gay, he's gay, he's gay, he's gotta be gay. There's no way you would tell me the most homophobic joke of all time and then for 20 minutes be in the air, nuts to butts with another man and just be like, I'm just gonna hold on to you the way down, man, all right? That's right. We got a saying around here, secrets are safe in the sky. (laughs) Straight guys are so much gayer than they'll ever admit. (laughs) It's true, straight guys do so much gay shit, they don't even realize it, okay? Like, what's gayer? What's gayer, okay? What's gayer? Look, we're all friends, we're all family. Doors are locked from the outside, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's gayer? What's gayer? Okay, being like, <clears throat> what's gayer? <laughs> Sucking an adult man's dick like a blue collar fucking American? <laughs> Just clocking in, clocking out, doing a job, brother. That's right, yeah. And guess what? I'm union, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's gayer, that or being like, Aaron Rodgers is six foot five, 235 pounds. He went to UC Berkeley and last year he scored so many touchdowns. Yes, Aaron, me and my friends, we fantasize about you, Aaron. Yes, every Sunday I wear your work uniform to watch you play a game. (laughs) 
little sus, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's gay, so many guys do gay shit, they don't even realize it. The, 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 way, the way guys judge women's bodies, the way they talk about women, they do it in such a gay, catty way, you know? And I think it's more immaturity than anything, because I used to do it when I was younger, and you know, I don't anymore, but the way guys talk about women's bodies, it's like so, like, you just, it's, it's, gay. it's gay, it's gay, it's gay, it's gay, it's gay, it's gay. Guys, I have girlfriends of mine who I cannot orgasm because they're insecure about the way their bodies look and specifically the way their vagina looks because the guys they're with don't like the way they look down there. Some women are even getting labiaplasties. They're getting their lips lasered off because the guys they're with don't like the way their pussies look. What kind of a straight dude <laughs> in the history of time has ever been looking at a handcrafted flower made by God, a giver of life. It makes water, you can drink it to survive. And it's been like, and now. <laughs> Aesthetically, no thank you. <laughs> It's like, bro, you are a fag, okay? <laughs> and I can say that word. I've had more dicks in my body than there are letters in the alphabet. Yeah, that's right. And I'm talking the Chinese alphabet, brother. What's up? Yeah. And a lot of characters. A lot of characters. Yeah, dude, guys will be like, ew, dude, it looks like a roast beef sandwich. Gross. I'm like, fuck you, give me a bib, let's go, okay? Yeah, I want to eat it like an orphan at Thanksgiving. Let's do this, all right? Yeah, like Thanksgiving, Papa like a little extra turkey skin. Let's go, Mama, come on. Ew, dude, it looks like someone threw a grenade into a deli. Fuck you, I love G.I. Joe, give me a helmet, let's do this, all right? Yeah, I want to go to war for that pussy, that's right, yeah. I want to get PTSD from that snatch, yeah. Yeah, I want to get done going down on you, walk away and be like, we lost a lot of good men in there. <laughs> Are you single? Um, <laughs> woo! Somebody wound her up. <laughs> that was incredible. Myself down. Oh, sorry, I got turned into a black preacher for a second. <laughs> oh Lord, I said, please, uh, please, uh, please, Jesus, give me two more inches of penis. <laughs> oh, that's right, Lord. All I'm asking is two inches. Can you give me two now? Two inches. Please, Lord, donate. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not on drugs. <laughs> Nobody ever believes me, dude. I'm not on coke, I'm not on drugs. I'm eight years sober. I haven't had a drug or a drink since April 2015. That's very nice. That's very nice. That's very nice. Thank you. I didn't say for that. You didn't clap, so I'm, I'm gonna drink. Uh, <laughs> could, you, could, you <laughs> could you imagine I relapsed tonight? <laughs> This is the saddest Tom Waits song you've ever heard. <laughs> I got drunk at the cutting room. Heroin from mustache jean jacket man. I sold my cat for meth. It's a joke. I'd sell it for coke. Um, <laughs> No, dude, I'm totally sober. No drugs, no alcohol. I, everybody thinks I'm on coke all the time and I'm just an adult with unmedicated ADHD, okay? That's all it is, yeah, yeah. And I did so much coke for over a decade that it's still in my system. So, you know, a lot of people don't know. I'm, I'm so no, no drugs, no alcohol. I'm, I'm sober, I'm an alcoholic. And a lot of people don't know about alcoholism, you know? They're like, what is alcoholism? I tell them, I'm like, look, alcoholism is a lot like homosexuality. It's a choice. <laughs> Guys, come on, that's a fun little ha-ha, okay? 
Yeah, I know. Oh, woo. Could you imagine? <laughs> it's a disease. Okay, so. I, I, I don't smoke weed. I, I, was, I was a bad drunk. Uh, I, I was a real bad drunk and sober is like the best thing I've ever done. And uh, I, 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 got to, I got so drunk one night, I uh, woke up naked in a guy's bed and uh, I, I asked him, I go, how the hell did I end up here? And he goes, well, you met me at a pizza shop last night and you bet me a slice of pizza. I couldn't fuck you in the ass. <laughs> I know, I know. Y'all ever get so drunk you wake up gay? <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck, what happened? And he goes, well, you came back to my apartment, you passed out naked in my bed like a fat pig. I go, did you fuck me in the ass? He goes, no. And I go, wow, well, looks like you owe me a slice of pizza. <laughs> Cough it up, chompers. <laughs> No, but I, uh, I'm, I'm totally sober. Yeah, no drugs, no alcohol. All I, I just smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, work out excessively, overeat, undereat, use sleep as a means of escaping reality, get tattoos to mask emotional pain with physical pain, ride a bike obsessively, and other than that, I'm completely sober. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, totally sober. <laughs> I, I, I am addicted to cigarettes and I will never quit. Stop telling me to quit, okay? Stop telling me to quit. People will literally be in a bathroom and be like, you're gonna quit smoking. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? What am I gonna do, vape like a little fucking baby piss boy? Fuck you, okay? You don't know the long-term effects of vape? At least I know what's gonna happen with cigarettes. I'm gonna get my dick sucked in an iron lung. Let's go, let's go. Vaping is so disgusting. Right now there's a fucking construction worker working at a construction site. He's 78 years old. He's had a torn rotator cuff since the Reagan administration, okay? He builds the buildings that we live in. He's got a welder's mask on. He's ripping a Marlboro Red underneath the mask. He pops it up. He pops in a Winston. He's like, uh, what the hell's that smell? And 10 feet away, there's some 22 year old named Landon who's like, strawberry. <laughs> Like, this is disgusting. People that vape, they go in the bathroom and they blow it in their sweater like they're better than me. I'm like, at least I go outside in the elements like God intended, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's gonna kill me, but it's what the natives would have wanted, okay? So, yeah. That's right, I'm doing my part, you know? People hate smokers, I love it. Oh my God, in the morning I do a Marlboro Red shotgun blast at the chest, what's up, you know? Yeah, at night I do a Newport menthol mint chocolate chip dessert. Oh yeah, I'm trash from Delaware, bitch. That's right, yeah, Delaware, the Florida of the North. <laughs> yeah. People hate smoking, man. You know, no one hates smoking more than children. I got caught smoking and this little kid whose name was probably like Cedar told <laughs> his mom on me. I was at my friend's son's birthday party, right? We're on Long Island and I'm outside smoking and this kid comes up and he goes, mister, what's that? And I'm like, ah, you little creep. What the fuck are you talking about? And I go, nothing, get out of here. A minute later, his mom comes up and she goes, ah. My son told me that you were smoking, and um, I don't really want him exposed to those types of things. I'm like, lady, we're on Long Island right now. <laughs> the kid's eight. Statistically, in 10 years, he's gonna be on pills, so. <laughs> it's not my fault, you know? She's like, yeah, he's, he's an eight-year-old, and I just try to protect him from that stuff, and I was like, what? are we talking about, dude? Life's not fair, lady. What are you talking about? You want to protect that kid? What, I'm gonna give him a check. When's his birthday? Yeah, a reality check. Life is shit, learn it now. I wanted to be like, yeah, life's not fair. You know how I know life's not fair? Because when I was that kid's age, eight years old, my dad died, yeah, that's right. How'd he die? He got crushed by a train. Yeah, that's right, I know, I know, I know. It's a heavy topic, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, almost as heavy as a train that crushed him. I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, and you know how unfair life is? Yeah, that happened to me when I was eight, and 10 years later, I moved to New York City, and for the past 20 years, every day to get to work. 
I gotta ride a train. <laughs> Every day to navigate this hellscape, I gotta ride the thing that killed him, and on top of it, I gotta give it money. <laughs> Life's not fair, so if you'll excuse me, bitch, I'm gonna smoke. But I didn't say any of that, I'm a pussy. And I was like, oh, no problem, ha, <laughs> ha, Sorry, 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 my fault, my fault. <laughs> nah, man, but that really bothered me. This mom is trying to shield her kid from life. What the fuck? Dude, my dad got crushed by a train. My mom, when I was eight, wasn't going around to Amtrak being like, no one ride trains. No, no, no trains for the baby boy, no. You know what we did? We bottled it up. Didn't talk about it for 25 years. I developed a debilitating alcohol and drug addiction. I was a closeted half homosexual for most of my life. And I learned life is hard, be harder, which is a song lyric by a band called God's Hate, which is what I thought I had for being kind of gay. <laughs> we put one foot in front of the other and we fucking dealt with it. And I got through it with my mom. My mom, my mom, my mom taught me gratitude. Yes, that's right. She always taught me to be grateful for things in life no matter what we have or didn't have. And my mom is such a sweet baby angel and I gotta say, I used to make fun of her so much because her house is a complete live, laugh, love museum. <laughs> Like everywhere you look, it's just like live, laugh, love. Kitchens are where our hearts are made. Make new friends, keep the old. One is silver, the other is gold. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, you fucking human Yankee candle? What is this shit? And then I realized, oh my God, my mom is the sweetest, kindest, most positive, accepting, loving angel woman you would ever meet in your entire life. Because everywhere she goes and looks, she's reminded to live, laugh, love. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, I need those reminders. Because if I'm not reminded to live, laugh, love, I'm gonna slice, stab, shoot, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's easy to be grateful for the good, but I really had to learn for me, and getting sober really helped me out with this, because I'll tell you right now, getting sober, quitting drugs and alcohol, the hardest part is not stopping drugs and alcohol, the hardest part <laughs> is realizing that you were the problem. <laughs> Holy shit, oh my God, I put that stuff down, I'm looking in the mirror like the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> Holy shit, does that suck? Realizing you've been a dick for fucking your whole life? My God. But in getting sober, I had to realize I had to be grateful for everything. You know, all that shit that happened, it used to really eat me up. I, I used to be so angry. I used to be, you know, um, such a, a depressed kind of guy. But I've realized, you know, I got to be grateful for it all because I'm grateful for who I am today. I love who I am today. And that stuff made me who I am. So, you know, I'm grateful for that, you know. And, and I really feel like at the end of the day, you know, gratitude has helped me find happiness. And happiness is something I've searched for my entire life. And I realized that happiness is not something you achieve. Happiness is not something you get one day. It's not something, you know, when I get the job, I'll be happy. When I get the girl, I'll be happy. When I break this couple up and I steal him, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. Because I searched for happiness my whole life, brother. That's right, yeah. I searched for it in the bottom of a bottle and at the base of a man's penis. And it ain't there, it ain't there. I even looked for it in an asshole of a trans hooker named Gabriella, that's right. I looked in there like a kaleidoscope. Happiness, you in there? No, just more shit and gotcha, okay. And I realized that happiness is fleeting. It comes and it goes. When you see it, grab it, kiss it, and let it go. Because happiness is something that we can all have. You just gotta open your eyes and see it. It's been here the whole time. It's in the moment. It's up to you to recognize that you have it because happiness lives here. Because happiness is like 9-11. It's an inside job. My name is Ian Fadens. Thank you all so much. Thank you guys so, so much.
the fuck? Ugh. You messed up my fucking outfit! Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> Cut. Great. <laughs>